Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We're working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Becton Dickinson and Company, ticker BDX. Over the next five minutes, I'll discuss both my thoughts on the valuation of this company and its business quality. First up, this company is $70 billion in market cap operating in the healthcare equipment and supplies industry, generally a good industry, but we can see how that goes. They develop, manufacture, and sell medical supplies, devices, lab equipment, diagnostic products worldwide. So that gives us a little bit of an idea of what they're doing. They have a beta of 0.6525. That's interesting because if you're significantly less than one, it suggests you're a little less volatile um, as a stock, which is usually a sign of business quality. Not always, but it's usually one sign. The next thing that immediately I notice when I go down here for return on invested capital is that you have 20 straight years of profitability, always a good sign to be a relatively high quality company when you never have a loss. And so that's really good. Now, the second piece you can take away from this return on invested capital is you have two different phases of their business. So from 2002 to 2014, they were always double digit return on invested capital between 10 and 20%, relatively good numbers. However, starting in 2015, their return on invested capital crashed down to 4%, and it stayed in that range ever since, even with a low of 0.8% in 2018. So if I were to look at this and I would have studied this in 2014, I'd say, hey, this is a good business. Look at this. Look at these numbers. These are really good returns on invested capital, double digits and everything. Since 2015, this has been a bad business. So let's see if we can suss that out what's going on as we dive a little deeper. Now, you, with these 10-year medium returns, they're heavily weighted by your recent history. And so you're getting poor returns on invested capital, 5%, again, suggesting a poor business. Your PE of 36.9 is extremely high, especially for a business with these types of returns. So I'm immediately thinking this company is overvalued. Um, I'd like to see a number you know, 15 or less for most companies, for your average company. And right now, I'm seeing that this is likely a below average company. So you'd want to pay something like 12 Eight, something like that if this company is below average. Now, what's interesting here is you have double-digit revenue growth for the last 10 years. That's actually a really good sign because if you're able to grow at double digits, then you can get away with high valuations. You can get away with a few other things. The downside is that despite growing revenue at 10% a year, you have assets growing at 17.8% a year. This is what would cause you to have declining return on invested capital. You're growing your assets faster than you're growing your revenue. You're growing your assets faster than free cash flow, assets faster than EPS. This number growing that fast is going to destroy the returns that shareholders are going to get, and it's going to be a massive problem for you over time. And that's what we see in this initial chart. If you like what you're hearing so far, please like this video. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, so you can get notifications as I upload new investing videos each and every week. So one thing we can see here is you've had very little EPS growth over time. You started out at $5.59. You grew to six eighty five in 2021. However, you can see that that's not stable. They, I mean, that five fifty nine dollars in 2012 was actually a relative peak because you started crashing later on. In 2018, you only had $0.60, cents, 60 cents of earnings, $3.94, $2.74. So like, this is like peak earnings as well. So you're getting paying this valuation on peak earnings. It's a really bad setup for a successful investment. When we go to the income statement, we can see that, you know, again, they have this operating profit that's been fairly, you know, profitable the entire time. That's always really good, um, you know, profitable net income every time. Um, the other thing that's looking bad here is in order to grow as fast as they can, so they're growing double digits, but their returns on equity are so low that they're having to dilute you over time. So they started the decade with 205 shares outstanding and they ended the decade with 289. So they're having to dilute you in order to provide their growth, which is an even worse sign for the potential for future performance. So you can see here that the PP&E, the plant and equipment has doubled over that time frame. Their assets have gone up 5x over the course of the decade. They've clearly made some major acquisitions. They hit a huge acquisition, it looks like, in 2018, where you have going from you know 7.5 billion of goodwill to, to 23.6 billion in goodwill. But what's unfortunate is that's not played out in the financials. They're not getting the return that you would need to justify that. You've taken your long-term debt from 2.4 billion to 17.1 billion. That's what, five, six, 6x in your uh, maybe 7x of your long-term debt over the course of that decade. So you've 7x your debt. But what happened to your income? Your income's barely up 
50%, maybe doubled. You've six extra debt, but you doubled your income. Terrible, terrible numbers. You have pretty steady stock-based compensation growing each and every year, um, which is actually a significant number when you look at this. I mean, but they have bought back stock periodically, but they've also issued stock. And so you have net issuance of stock over time because of all that issuance. Um, they did take on this debt and issued stock clearly as part of this um, acquisition that occurred in 2018. So overall, I don't like what I see with Beck and Dickinson. I had heard about this being a really good company historically, and you can see that in the numbers up until 2014. But starting in 2014, it just got worse and worse and worse. Um, so for me, I would pass on Beckton Dickinson. It wouldn't even go on my watch list. It's too high valuation. The returns are simply too low to be worth my time. Thank you for listening. Please hit that like button and please hit subscribe if you enjoyed this content because I'm uploading investing content. I'm looking at every company in the S&P 500. And if you subscribe and ring that bell, you will get notifications as I upload those future videos. Thank you.